Hello. Welcome back to another Pen Talk. Thank you very much for tuning in and joining me as I explore the amazing, incredible, diverse, wide world of pens. And this video is going to be one that is a little different. I've done uh, similar videos in the past, but I got motivated to do another one. Buying no new pens has put me in a different perspective. So you see in front of you a bunch of combos. So one end is a fountain pen nib and the other end is a pencil. Obviously before the days of ballpoints. And I do have a Conway Stewart combo which has a ballpoint where these have pencils. But we're not going to look at any of these pens in particular. We're going to look at a model that this one is a larger version, more expensive version. There's a gold nib on it. But this is the pen that got me motivated and said I wanted to get this restored. It's a wherever. And it's just that rolled celluloid sheet. You can see that seam there where the sheet has been rolled. There's an interesting top to it, which is a wherever feature. Some a cap band, a lever, which appears to be coated with something. And there you can see that rolled sheet. And then at the end is a pencil. Obviously the metal bits are slightly corroded. The cap comes off in less than one turn. And we'll see that classic a vintage section. It's a steel nib, even though it has 14K on it. Uh, we may pop that. We'll see what it's like. I'm not comfortable with the nib and feed location there. But this comes out easily. There's no dried sack, so at one point in time this was opened up. So we're just going to do a regular restoration. Let me show you different stages. But I just thought it would be interesting to look at it. And as we looked at the bigger model, you'll see some things in common, like that design at the top with those rings. Uh, different style clip, but in both of these, the clip is kind of down near the cap band, which is an interesting design trait. And we see a similar type lever, but a little bit more upscale, and it looks like there's some corrosion on that. And in this one, the pencil end unscrews to reveal an eraser. This is calcified. It may even function a little bit. But the higher end ones do come apart like this. And pencils all work on these. And if we add it up, we'll see a very nice... Oh, it's not a gold nib. I was confused. Some of these other ones have gold nibs. But it's a nice branded wherever nib. Appears to be extra, extra fine. So we'll show you this before and after pictures of my restoration of this one. I do like that green celluloid color. So the other thing I like about these is we have your orange and red ebonite hard rubber models here. These are all new bankers, which I really thought were the kind of epitome. I love the celluloid that these are made from. And again, it's that same rolled sheet that we had uh, on the wherevers, but they're just nice. Then we had a whole bunch of different companies make these combos. Said Jaffe. Somebody chewed on that finial at the top. There's a labeling there. This doesn't come apart. That cap band is kind of loose. These were never high-end pens, but this one does have a 14 karat warranted dib. That's interesting, because the rest of the pen doesn't seem to justify that nib. Now here's another interesting design. You know, it's kind of oxidized, kind of gotten old, and again, doesn't come apart. And this one also has, it has a Waterman nib, that's interesting. No other branding on it. It's certainly, I don't think, made by Waterman. And here's that blue version. Again, kind of uh, discolored here in the barrel. 
nice clip. This is a Park Row. Again, really third party. And the cap comes off. And we'll also notice this is a warranted 14K nib. Looks like it's a medium point. So there was a lot of variation in these combos. And I'm very happy. I probably have another 50 of them somewhere else, which I've looked at on occasion. But we're going to focus on restoring the wearer. So I did mention the Conway Stewart combo that I bought in Harrods many, many years ago. Over 20. Yes, it's a big box. The lid comes up and we'll see another ornate box following with the green and gold theme. Let's get this out and look at the pen. Well, as you know, I keep everything. So here's the receipt from Harrods. I bought it in 2003, January 25th. Paid 159 pounds. I also bought a nice cross pen at the same time. They had great sales on in Harrods, downstairs in their pen department. So one of the things that I think is a little bit remiss is this is not a heavy duty box. It's extremely light. It has nice little locks here. The cover comes up and we'll see a nice presentation Yes, it's a Churchill pen, so it's going to have a specific design to it. Give you a nice little insert here. Incredible, nice little booklet about Churchill. And there's the quotable Churchill. I mean, it's an impressive arrangement. You get a Churchill cigar. This one has not been smoked. It's a Don Ramos. Not familiar with that. But it's from Honduras. Amazing that they give you a package of Waterman cartridges. But here's the pen. I mean, after over 20 years, it still looks great. I love that resin. The metal bits, no oxidation, gold filled, and of course, it's a ballpoint. And the cap comes off in a little bit over one turn, and we'll see a really nice Conway Stewart 18 karat medium nib. I mean, it works as a pen. And as we take off the Section, we'll see no converter. That's why they gave you the cartridges. I haven't checked to see what type of converter would fit. Pen has a good weight to it. I just fell in love with it, and because I like my combos, I purchased it. Uh, about five or six years ago, I was at the Long Island Pen Show, and someone was actually selling exactly this pen in the box, and for not much more in U.S. dollars than I paid for it in pounds in the UK. So obviously not a collectible pen, at least from that show. So I did my first polish of the cap. Very happy with how it came out. If we can compare it to the bottom of the pencil, you can see how that oxidation of the brass came off very easily. And the polishing brought out a little bit more depth and luster and color to that celluloid. I use my trusty polishing pad. Put a link in the description. I buy them on Amazon. And of course I use my Renaissance wax. A lot of controversy over the wax, but I've been using it for over 30 years and have never had any issues with it. And I like the way that it makes the surface really good. So I use my knockout block to punch out the nib and feed out of the section. Section's in good shape. That end where the sack is going to be attached has been cleaned off already, so I may have started a restoration on this pen, or someone else may have got it, but who knows. The feed is just a classic ebonite feed with a huge channel in it, some fins which don't connect to anything, and then we have the nib. 
So the nib has seen better days. And it is 14 karat gold plate. The gold plate was hidden by the section. But the gold plate has been long gone. You can see at the bottom of the nib, there's some corrosion. Probably had some ink in contact with it for a while, but it actually wasn't much in there when I took it apart to clean it. If we flip it over, we'll see some remnants of that gold plate on the back side of the nib. No tipping material. This is just a stamped steel nib, kind of like what uh, Estabrook had in their pens of this era. But we're going to put it together, see if I can line up that feed and nib a little bit better, and then we'll find a suitable sack. So the nib is now in the section, and I positioned the feed as close to the end of the nib as I could. It can't come down any further because it's going to extend beyond the nib. But I'm happy with it. We'll see how it writes. I don't do some adjustments on the tines, but now they seem to be pretty well aligned. And you can see that 14K, but the gold plate is hard to read. So the pencil mechanism is just a friction fit in the bottom of this barrel. And there is a slight crack at the bottom of the barrel. It's right here where my thumbnail catches. You know, I might have done something with a little bit of glue on the back side, but it's not critical. And the barrel's been polished up. It looks like this uh, lever just is a different color of brass, but I'm happy with the way that it looks. It's a nice looking resin, or a nice looking celluloid as one might say. This is just a propel mechanism. When this is in the pen, as you turn the end, you'll see that that rod in here comes down and that pushes out the lead. But if you turn it the other way, the lead doesn't go back in. You kind of push it back in. There might be something there to hold the lead in, and there might be a little piece of lead at the end, but I'm comfortable with how it works now. So we're in dark mode, because we're going to bring in the LED and take a look inside this barrel. But let's just play the LED on the celluloid. I always think it's interesting when you use a different light, how the colors come out slightly different. If you look inside from here, You'll see that J bar in there. Now it's hard to see, but maybe if we come in from the other side, you can see it in there. Just a plain J bar. This was a lower end pen, so not a lot was done. If we go inside with the LED, you can see some transparency in the celluloid, which is what we expected to see. But I really enjoy the colors that they use. The reds and the greens. At least it looks green to my eyes. So I think it's be good to show the wherever combo in relationship to some other pens you might be familiar with. Pen BBS uh, 308, a Pilot Metropolitan, and a Lamy All Star. It's a long pen, especially taking into account that length that the pencil does. But let's see how they look configured for action. So here they are posted and the wherever is similarly in length to the Metropolitan. I don't consider the All-Star a real posting pen but it is incredibly long and the 308 posts fairly well and it's, it's considerably longer. Let's zoom in on that nib and section. So here's where we see a lot of the vintage traits the small section, both short in length and thin in diameter. It's small nib, which I would say is a slightly smaller than what is typically called a number five, which is what the Pilot Metropolitan resembles. The Pen BBS has a number six nib in it, and of course the Lamy has that Lamy nib, which doesn't fit into any category at all. But this pen is comfortable to hold and write with, which is important. I enjoy it better than the Metropolitan, which 
never endeared itself to me when I tried to use it as an everyday carry, where the 308 works extremely well, and I also was not a fan of the Safari Lamy style section, All Star, that triangular piece that tries to make your fingers go in a, in a place where you may or may not like them. So I've attached a number 18 sack. I had to trim it quite a bit because it just has a small spot to go into that barrel. So the ink capacity is not going to be great, but then I don't expect it to be. I've used some shellac both inside and outside because this sack that I used didn't quite fit that end of the section well. So now it's there very sturdy. I give a little tug just to make certain that it's secure. We're going to put some talcum powder, pure talcum powder on the sack, insert it, figure out an ink, and see how this combo pen writes. So I wanted a nice green ink in the pen, and I think this ink number six will suit that purpose. Here's the bottle. And I put number six on the top because there's no way I'm going to be able to interpret that, even though the lettering on the the lettering on the bottle label is green. Here's what the ink looks like on a paper towel. You know, I cleaned off the nib after filling, and I always wipe off the top of the bottle so the cap is easy to remove next time. We have some nice strong spring sunlight coming in. So I felt it'd be good to take a look at this celluloid under the sunlight. I think it's a great combination of colors. You know, the pattern is good. It's a very pretty pen. Handsome, you might say also. But the real important question is, is how's it write? Do I enjoy writing with it? And we'll explore that part of the pen. So now it's time for some editorial comments. But first, let's show you the dimensions of the pen. So the one question that I certainly would ask is, Chris, why are you showing us a restoration of a interesting, maybe, design of a vintage pen that doesn't get many views? And I'll say because I enjoy doing it and that's why I do all my videos, is because I enjoy doing the videos. I appreciate viewers and comments and interactions with the audience, but I do it for my own reward and pleasure. And this is a vintage design that has always attracted my attention. A very practical design. You know, the cap comes off in a little over one turn, that section's a little on the small side. We'll give you those dimensions. But it feels okay in the hand. And it fits well as it is. Nice balance. It's a light pen. As many of these uh, rolled celluloid pens are. And the other interesting aspect of this design is it is a phenomenally good poster. It's the same length posted as it is unposted and capped. And it fits incredibly well in the hand feels good. What else can you say about a pen and a design? You know, to me it's unfortunate that this type of design and this type of pen has certainly fallen out of flavor completely, but that's why I enjoy vintage. I enjoy going back into the past and looking at what may have been popular, what may have been enjoyed, and who knows how many people wrote with this pen and kept it and considered it a prized possession. And now I have a phenomenal opportunity to show it to you. So, to be upfront and honest, I did a little bit of smoothing 
probably pretty significant smoothing on this nib. It was a little scratchy and extremely dry when I first wrote with it, but it didn't take much smoothing to put it into a decent writer. It's never going to be a perfectly butter smooth nib, but as you can see, it lays down a nice line and it feels nice on the paper, which to me is the true test of a pen. So we've come to the conclusion of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. You know, whether you're going to go hunting for this pen, here's some of the recent postings on eBay. That's kind of like my go-to platform now for vintage. You know, going to a pen show is great for vintage because you get to hold it, write with it, hopefully, and decide whether it's a pen you would like to part your money with to obtain. But for most of us, that's not how we're going to acquire them. So, you know, I bought a lot of vintage pens on eBay, and I've been very happy with almost all of them. And I've never been disappointed. You know, a lot of times you buy a pen, whether it's vintage or modern, or and you finally get it, and it's not what you expected. But that's, you know, as much of a challenge for you as it is for the seller. So I hope this video finds everyone safe, healthy, and happy. Thank you very much for watching. May you find a pen that you enjoy using, putting ink down, because that's what they're for, and they enjoy doing their job, like my crabs enjoy holding up pens. We're going to say this is the end, and we will say bye until the next video. Who knows what that might be? Don't turn your pen while you write, or you may not get a line you want.